everybody. I am Alessandra Venturini, the holder of the Jean Monnet Chair on European Migration Studies. I'm very glad today to open the second edition of the seminar Kokumin, Consumption of Cultural Goods as Driver of Mega Integration. The seminar is interdisciplinary with contribution by economists, anthropologists, social scientists, linguistic demographers, and by an artist who is very involved in the social inclusion. The last year we had Michelangelo Pistoletto, and this year we are honored that Marinella Senatore, who is an amazing artist, very busy, has accepted to participate. She, is, she will be introduced by Giuliana Setari, who, with her husband Tommaso, is an important art collector, but she is no more for being a dear friend of many artists who supported in many occasions. And I just recall for her bibliography that she is the president of Città dell'Arte. I now give Giuliana the floor to introduce Marinella Senatore, that we thank again for having accepted to participate and, in this. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Professor Alessandra Venturini for inviting me again to her seminar. And uh, I want to add some uh, words to what she just uh, said, that I am the president of Città dell'Arte Pistoletto, but I'm also the president of Martini uh, Foundation, the Dina Foundation for Contemporary Art, because this is one of the reasons, because I'm a friend of many young artists, which I supported all along the time. Um, as you may remember, last year I had the honor to introduce and make exchange with Maestro Michelangelo Pistoletto was body of works and reflections on inclusion and art, is represented in his work named Terzo Paradiso that you may know already. I have today the honor to introduce Marinella Senatore, a great artist who is very well acquainted with Pistoletto's artistic vision, especially since she participated to the University of Ideas at Città dell'Arte in Biella. Art as an instrument of inclusion is the title of today's session and senatore societal engagement her participatory forms of art, performances and actions are at the stake. These are key words that may be used when trying to sum her artistic dwelling. Covering more than 20 years, in a multitude of places around the world, she has been working with several media, performances, music, film, and video. But as she likes to point out, she always works before in her atelier, drawing and painting with sculpture and collage, among others, with all the usual and traditional artist tools. 20 years or so, I would ask her to go back, even if briefly, to the years of the studies of her education years in Naples and in Rome. Thanks uh, for being here, dear Marinella. Thank you, Giuliana. Thank you very much, Alessandra. I'm very honored uh, to be here. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to share ideas and visions with academics and uh, students as well and I think it's also a part of my role part of my job actually pointing out that artist has a social every artist has a social role it's crucial for me to better understand also the impact and the restitution even the transformative processes that we can instigate within a community and as Juliana said, thank you for the nice presentation. I started in 2003 working professionally, exhibiting in the private galleries, museums, foundation and institution around the world. And uh, this year is the 10th anniversary of the foundation of my school, the School of Narrative Dance, that we will talk extensively later. But yes, I always had this multidisciplinary uh, interest. My background is very multifacetic because I studied art in Naples. Then uh, um, at the same time, I attended the Conservatory of Music. I'm a trained professional violinist. And um, 
ultimately in Rome, I attended the National Film School where I, in Rome, where I had the chance to work with Oscar nominee or Oscar winner director of photography and directors such as Vittorio Storaro, Giuseppe Rotunno, well, a very, very incredible training. Then I went to Spain. I received another degree and I completed my PhD in art and uh, community based projects. So, yeah, so uh, the drawing, uh, drawing, collage and object based art uh, was always my main uh, field of research. And then I developed through the years, starting in 2006, a modality based on participation of the engaging of people in the making of an artwork, not just as passive recipient of it, but active and dynamic um, character within this storytelling that is art. And what you are looking now, actually, uh, you're looking at the picture of uh, several performances of this school of narrative dance around the world and uh, New York City, Zurich, China, oh, 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 I don't know, more than right. 23 countries around the world. And definitely I reached out the interest of uh, expertise and uh, collectors and curators and journalists in my field, but not only, because my projects are completely community-based, are socially engaged and foster emancipation and empowerment of people. In fact, uh, my question is, does the engagement with this nomadic school help you to focus on the meaning of art as a process of aggregation and on the possibility of creating communities without boundaries, but throughout inclusions? Because all the instruments of your performance are movement, music, spontaneous dance, as you said, there is no judgment, everybody, there is comprehension sharing among all, but uh, what is the restitution of this regarding this specific aspect of creating communities and what about immigration, uh, minorities, uh, possibility of uh, reaching? When I start working with a new community or unexpected community that may be result as the final restitution of our processes, I'm usually invited by uh, public museums or institutions. I start working and I lived for a long time nomadically in order to live with the community I was working with over 20 years <laughs> traveling around the world and changing my own house <laughs> every time. Uh, now, for instance, you see South Africa, so at William Kentridge Foundation. So I'm really involved in a lot of continents and very often we stigmatize the group or fragile groups, um, even though at the end, what we foster is the sharing of experience, of energy, of frustration, desires, wish wishes, and people that can communicate on another level. During these massive events, usually in the street or in the museum or premises, uh, even the organization of um, OMS stated two years ago in a very interesting research that the beat, heartbeat of people can synchronize during this event, massive events in the public space using performative languages. This is extremely powerful and it's effective because you can create a, new ideas of community not based on race gender not even sharing of job environment or religious topics but on the sharing of experience that challenge your limits extend your possibility and and triggers your empowerment and i would like to go uh, with you uh, through uh, the sources of your vision, because in your uh, work, it's possible to retrace some uh, parts of our polyedric history uh, of our recent past uh, from the writers, Samuel Beckett, activist and poet, Varsam Shire, uh, feminism activist, vernacular song, like uh, the one uh, by Domenico Modugno, or the political street theater in the 60s uh, to the 
religious procession of uh, ancient tradition, not only Italian. Uh, also with the luminaire, the luminarie. Uh, these are a little bit specific uh, uh, for Italy uh, traditional uh, um, uh, occasion in town and village, especially religious. Um, all this is uh, put together in your work. You can resent all this uh, as a background. Can you tell us about? Absolutely, with pleasure. Actually, both environment, music field, intending my experience very pivotal in the orchestras, or the movie field, which is another core structure work, both were part of my formation, and of course, uh, both were my interest because I liked very much the idea to enhance my individuality, but in a choral structure, in a collective system, which is, in my opinion, the nature of every community. And uh, the, I detest to talk about mass as people without personal expression, actually enhancing every single individual, we can really build a common place together, especially a social place. That's why I often merge it and mix it together, experience very far uh, like refugees or asylum seekers with the very wealthy district of other cities or young kids in the school or scholars or unemployed people, uh, homeless, all together, because these are all citizen, we try to celebrate also a new idea about vulnerability. Who is vulnerable? Who is fragile? Who can become a leader and uh, step out from their own position? This happens very often with the stigmatized groups within a community that suddenly they become absolutely leading groups uh, for the one of the performance in Palermo during a manifesta biennial in 2018, a group of blind people were leading the procession and nobody asked whether they would have made this task properly or not. We were just there sharing uh, with them and they were absolutely empowered by this experience and they were treated for once not as uh, people with this capacity but people with different condition and different know-how but it's quite it's, it's a kind of a collective body so many bodies but a collective body in free movement together yeah, that's why we, uh, I quote very often Judith Butler when she says bodies in alliance which in my in my terms, it's exactly how I would like to see the world now. And with the school of narrative dance, intending uh, dance as a very ancestral uh, movement in the society, so something very community focused, we work on the body language, but not exactly for with the topic in mind to create dancers, <laughs> but rather to uh, explore mindful movement, psychosomatic choreography, uh, mindfulness, and all the tools that we can use and languages that we can use in order to re-narrate and rephrase our own vision uh, of ourselves, of course, and ourselves within a community. And uh, very often, these performance take the um, form of uh, processions and parades, because as Juliana said, I'm very fascinated by ancestral rituals that belong to different cultures. In Italy, I call these religious rituals. In South America, I am more focused on carnival, but at the end, we are often in the street, and the street is again the great canvas for people to reinvent themselves. Maybe it's the same street where a homeless is sleeping every night and suddenly he becomes or she becomes the leader of a completely different uh, event where she feels empowered and um, not stigmatized, finally. In fact, you, you, say the, you use the word canvas. And in fact, all your work, you can see like a huge a canvas where everything is embroidered, you know, with, but very carefully, very gentle. And the gentle yes. is gentle is your gesture. 
the gesture because I, I saw you while, while you were not directing a performance, but just participating and exactly. giving, giving indication. And it's very everything is very smooth, very gentle. There is ne never um, a position. Eh? It's always, no, it's always. It's not abusive at all. And also the concept and of it's not abusive. is completely rewritten. Because what does it mean exactly failing? And this is a very big pressure uh, that every day we feel in our society. So we try to talk a lot about that. And we explore this during workshops, even not focus on movement necessarily, but um, uh, focus on uh, writing and reading session or sound or whatever. But we try to explore this very uncomfortable uh, um, uh, stigma. Stigma. Um, I believe that you are one of the most uh, popular Italian artists in the world. And I think that this is a very good uh, <laughs> opportunity for uh, Italian art in general. Um, you have, uh, I, 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 you mentioned already the many institutions, museums, art centers, township that have invited you. But I wanted to mention uh, the digital community of 6.5 million followers that constitute your larger public. And my question is, uh, do you know, do you think if uh, your uh, way of uh, acting art can uh, be, can be include, can include or reach uh, at least in some way, these minorities you are talking about, migrants, I mean, which kind of restitution you have. You, you were talking uh, earlier of uh, this very good word that we should use uh, more, uh, giving dignity. Uh, th this is something that uh, today is um, a word that we sh should try to use a little bit uh, more often uh, because concerns uh, the responsibility that each one of us has towards the planet, uh, ourself first, and so knowing who, who we are, and also towards the others and to, um, in a larger way to the planet. Uh, so do you have the, uh, mean, the, the do you think that uh, this digital community, which is so huge, uh, can reach uh, these uh, other smaller communities? Perhaps sometimes, as Alexandra says, they are closed. They are not so open to the rest of the world. Uh, thank you very much for this because it it very it's very dear to me. Uh, please, Francesco, would you like uh, to resend the luminarie photo, please? I would like to say a couple of words about it, because uh, Juliana mentioned a very dear terms, dignity, and this is at the core of such lighting structure, which are sometimes very big spaces that I create not only into the spaces of museum, but very often outside. This one, for instance, at, in New York, at, at the uh, High Line, this one for a very big show with Dior. So including and inserting in the cultural dialogue also other kind of languages and the professionals and ideas and also public. I'm very happy to don't talk exclusively to people, art lovers, but to have a very wide public, not connected to art necessarily, that is so dear following our activities, reaching out for new projects, performative or not, it doesn't matter. And this one is the Biennale of Sao Paulo. And I was the only woman and Italian to join the most incredible and important biennial in, in Italy, uh, in, in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. And uh, unfortunately, no one, uh, <laughs> no one magazine mentioned that. So I, uh, I very often, I use this example just to say that very often it's not only making things, but also how we narrate such things, how we restitute such things. If we have in mind just a very close community, which is the community of art, expertise, curator, collectors, whatever, which is great, it's my environment. But if I make what I make just 
for these people, of course, I'm making something very exclusive and it's not my focus. I'm super happy to have created through the work done in these years, such a huge community around the globe because the themes that we focus on are very urgent and they don't stand just in the agenda of the artist, but a lot of specialists, students, researchers, and uh, professionals, and people that are not involved in academic or cultural environment have a very clear in mind. Um, these big structures are in a certain way a sort of response from my side, an answer that I do. They are spaces full of energy. They are connected to the old ritual of the Luminaria in south of Italy. And beside the religious aspect and the quality of a festivity, you know, feste patronali or sort of, they, their ancestral meaning was to create temporary architecture temporary plazas uh, where people could make something absolutely extraordinary. But at the end of the day, they were conceived as a space for gathering. So the concept of assembly, a new idea of assembly, is at the, it's at, is at the very core of such work. And for me, these are new monument, no monument to very hegemonic uh, figures, very often male and white, but a uh, monument to citizen here and now to their dignity, their resilience, their possibility to empower the other. As Jacques Rancière says, just a man can emancipate a man. Not a dictatorship, not politics, just men can do this for other men. And it's exactly what I think. I like very much your discourse about a public monument or monument in public space, because we live now in a moment where everyone wants to negate what the past was. Uh, so the monuments are putting down, uh, statues are uh, destroyed, um, but history is made of every aspect that has been uh, uh, in the past. Today, monument is the, the uh, each day, as you say, uh, moment, what we are living now in society, this has to be put in, a, in, a represent, in, in representation, and you do with your work. Art without- it's kind a... of a for, to, formalization, Okay, or the idea of uh, the needs of the society, the problems, but uh, in a artistic form. You know what I, I, I express because... myself not very well, but what no, I mean. No, no, I, I totally it's understand. Kind of form, uh, you know, in art, you are, you have always the form, you know, the idea, the content, whatever uh, we, we talk in these terms. And I think that is a, a movement that you create. Exactly, it's a it's flow. A, is it a, a form of uh, of the art of today of today art art not connected to life and to people it's not interesting to me and even more art that is not useful i don't understand why people are so scared to say that art can be useful art is not less creative creative or artistic, it doesn't it's have less so value. <laughs> if yeah. it's useful, it can be a very sharp, actually, tool mm -hmm. for transforming, for changing, or just instigating smaller movements. Mm -hmm. So yes, definitely, I, I feel that I work like in a flow of sound, voices, uh, history, visions for the future. Yes. Um, and uh, 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 forms, uh, aesthetic values, formal values, and contents, and everything is just a flow. And I'm there to take them yep. and yep. orchestrate them on a canvas, on a sheet of paper, on the street when it comes to performance, on the facade of, of a big monument or in a square. That's exactly what, what I feel my, pursue, my, my purpose is what I'm good doing at and uh, how I can be useful. Understanding that the artist has a social role and until we don't, we artists don't understand that we miss a great chance. And with the pandemic and now with this horrible world, uh, pretending that we live in a sort of a disconnected bubble and these things are not really connected, connected 
it's integrated. one of the most missing opportunity for us as artists and for the all the other collaborators and all the other agent actors in this society but yes uh rethinking again about our role uh it's absolutely crucial very well marinella um i, I would like to um, quote some titles of your uh, of your uh, different uh, and many uh, exhibition procession. Uh, I, I just recall a few of them, like the one at Castello di Rivoli in 2014, uh, that was already Costruire Comunità, to build community, or the School of Narrative Dance, which is a monumental procession and a, a performative uh, celebration of community at Magazzino Italian Art Foundation in Cold Spring, New York, which is a great institution that, that uh, brings Italian art uh, so well abroad. Uh, or soundtrack at Centro Pecci di Prato, uh, a little bit closer uh, to us, because there is the sound, the familiar sound uh, that people of the city, of the town, brings in into the exhibition, into your performance. And uh, I like very much the title of the exhibition of Palazzo Strozzi in 2021, uh, which is We Rise by Lifting Others, um, because there is this uh, word of you that uh, I will uh, read uh, later on. But I wanted to mention uh, the fantastic uh, ex exhibition that you made uh, very, very recently at the Galleria Mazzoleni in uh, Torino, uh, because the title, Make It Shine, is a very joyful one first, and also it's a very appropriate uh, after the pandemia uh, tsunami that we have all uh, been through. It's a, a title that uh, is encouraging people uh, to go further, to overcome uh, difficulties and uh, try to rediscover beauty, uh, beauty uh, around us. Uh, your words, I was mentioning before, I like it very much. Uh, not, I'm not the only one who likes these words. I was always interested in systems of aggregation. If you withdraw yourself at the right time, you allow people to get in or people to gain space. And maybe you allow also things to happen. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. In every moment of the life, we should put this in mind and always remember, like a like a vade mecum. <laughs> but uh, yes, 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 indeed, because it's uh, sure it's such mind. a good, common, beautiful, common sense that we should all think about it. You know, just step back. Step back. But this is a lesson I learned from Pistoletto. <laughs> When uh, he, well, you know, he's very dear to me and his social theater, his zoo project, and of course, still the paradise are In the 60s. crucial for me, for my formation as well. And I share a lot of vision with him. But I learned that if you don't allow others to take space, and if you want to be always present, uh, you don't allow people to flourish. And uh, what you said when you saw me uh, working uh, during the performance, not abusively, not hierarchically, it's exactly that. I'm not there to say this is good, this is bad. I'm there to foster, to trigger, to activate. I like to think of myself as an activator. Yes, I think that this is uh, so important, uh, Marinella, especially now that we live, uh, we are through this uh, time of war. So. I think that the uh, artists uh, have uh, e e even uh, a, more, a bigger uh, responsibility you know, in showing the way. Um, is possible this process now? What do you think? I think so. I think that the artists could uh, le also lead the way, but as you say, not hierarchically. No, we need to collaborate and uh, let flourishing others around us and uh, but yes of course i think it's possible i devoted all my life to that so definitely i think it's possible and i saw six uh, six and a half million of people are already a portion of this world and so if we made something significant for 
six millions and half of people. So maybe it's, it seems that it's possible. It's possible that this uh, six uh, point five million people can uh, communicate this uh, fantastic message to others and mu multiplicate. Huh? So exactly and more and more. And perhaps but yes, to... we have to doubt ourselves. We have to negotiate with others. We have to leave space for others. This is definitely not a ride we can make alone. So thank you, Marinella. It's been great. Thank, Thank you. you very much to you. You know, I love you and I'm always grateful for being one of the very, very few mecenate in this world. I would not be able to do what I do without your support. And you know that it's true. It's affection, that's for sure. And respect. respect. Thank, you very, Thank you very much to both Giuliana and to Marinella, it was a fantastic exchange. Nobody else could lead it as Juliana because she's really put the hurt uh, and the passion in what she has done in all this year. It's all her sharing with the friends, the friends which are very far like me for background and so on. I don't know if uh, Viola would like, Viola Gian Girolami, the colleague, would like to make a question or intervene. Yes, actually, uh, uh, I was, well, more than, than asking a question, I, I was um, very impressed by the, by this idea of, I really like this idea of uh, the artist uh, as an activator. And, um, yeah. uh, listening <laughs> to you, I, I found myself, uh, um, uh, I mean, I, uh, I would say that the big problem in this, uh, in your work, in my opinion, is uh, to make such beautiful things happen, even letting so much space to the participants. Because many times, uh, people who um, who are, uh, I mean, people who work with uh, non-professional people um, are not so good in in realize beautiful things, beautiful happenings, beautiful performances, but you always have this impression that, yeah, it's a good experience. They had the, I mean, the participants are, are enjoying, it's a nice experience, but the beauty uh, is missing, the pure beauty. What, what makes art I understand. so different. So what, what would, how, how can you do it? I mean, I know it's, it's not something that it's so easy to explain, but maybe do you have some, I mean, how can you be a trigger to let them flourish? And yet, uh, how can you uh, allow them to, to make such beautiful things? This Thank you very a... much, Viola, also for the way you were talking, which is very moving. And I think we, I sorted this, first of all, collaborating with others. So I'm not saying that all the artists out there are good, as every practitioner, there are very good, less good, maybe with good intention, but not very interesting outcome. It's like, like his life, no? And I think we should start diversifying the competencies and put together teams. I team up with the people. When I don't know about uh, mental health, I team up with the therapist and with the uh, um, expertise. When I don't know about choreography, I team up with the choreographers. Of course, I try to find the best possible the, and provide this team as a platform to my participants. I'm not alone. And this is very important. I'm a great orchestrator, but I'm not alone. And I don't pretend to be who I'm not. So very often when we don't have a very good, uh, th this question is something that I heard in the past also from tons of curators of art. They even doubt about the quality of my project saying, with all these people not really literate, not educated, whatever, are you sure you will make something? Uh, oh yes, I made the Biennial of Venice and other 27 biennials. So of course I'm sure I can. But my role is also to find the yeah, competences and the, the proper people. If we imagine us as islands, we are going to lose. That's my reply to your question. So 
wherever you are frustrated for any of the outcome, call, reach out. Because of course I, as an artist and as an artist with a multidisciplinary background, I'm very much trained to enhance the beauty and the formal and aesthetical value, which are part of the communication, because we are made of that as well. It's not less worthy or less um, rich in contents if it's beautiful something. This is a very big mistake that was done by critics in the past. But yes, we cannot pretend to make it alone. This is definitely my way to proceed. And I have a huge team and every time I change because sometimes a collaborator of mine worked very well with the bodies in uh, Germany is not exactly the, the most adequate person I should work with in China. So it depends a lot. We must be extremely flexible, but definitely we have to team up and diversificate a lot of the competences and the role. We are in an orchestra and we cannot substitute ourselves to social scientists. I don't. I don't start pretending to know something that I don't have knowledge about or I don't know, maybe a um, social worker try to explain how is the community and then orchestrating an artistic process. It doesn't work. Thank you you need much. others. You need others. You too. Yes. Yeah. It's not easy to be a director because no. you need in a certain way, even if you, to choose uh, somebody you have, you should be have very clear in mind uh, what you want. So that's, that's why I think, and I don't want to sound absolutely uh, arrogant, but I think that not everybody can be a leader because exactly. leading a position is, is a, a bunch of talents that you should have in order to highlight the others. But if you're not willing to withdraw your presence sometimes, and me as Marinella Senatore, when I work with thousands of people, I understand now after 20 years of experience, when I have to withdraw myself and allow other collaborators or even participants to speak to take up. take the lead, yes. Yeah. This take is the leadership a very that, yeah. sensitive, yes. super, intriguing and very challenging role and it's not for everybody as not for everybody is the healing power of the, the healing peculiarity of our capacity yeah of course or like the teachers not everybody can be a good professor and it doesn't matter if you have a huge knowledge but sometimes you're just not good at it ah, so it's very <laughs> difficult <laughs> I uh, hope I gave you uh, a few insights, Viola. Yeah, that was uh, a really good uh, answer. Thank you. And um, yeah, and that's a, a good piece of advice uh, for my job. <laughs> Thank you very much. Don't feel I'm not a leader, by the way. I'm not a good leader, by the way. <laughs> Great. So you ha you should call people like me. Yes, so. well, that's what and I do. You, and you don't feel frustrated never no. about what you're doing, because I'm sure you're very good in what you do, but yeah. you need other competences to complete. The yeah, I absolutely. I definitely agree about this, because uh, if, if everybody knows what what one's good at, yeah. I mean, we can work amazingly well together. Yeah, as, as a, mod a contemporary philosophy says, we should know our purpose and our path in this life, what we are good at, why we are here and where we can do with what we know. We should start rethinking a lot about this very pivotal and easy or not so easy questions. But after so many years, trust me, I found my role. It's beautiful. Oh, I, Thank you for, for finding it. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, because this is also a lesson of human resource development. It is, is very, very often I, I make, a, um, I'm a co I consulting for, um, I don't know if it's the proper term, I'm an advisor for um, community, even uh, in entire city, 
companies. I don't know if they listen to me, but <laughs> at least I <laughs> try to they consult. They consult. I could, they yeah. consult at least, yes. There are many future. So if there is a no or any urgent question, I really thank you very much. Uh, Marinella first, Giuliana second, because organized the meeting, all the participants, the students that are in class, and all the people that will uh, review the registration because the the presentation will be recorded and put online on the um, chair um, website i will send it to the participants so they can also review it when they want thank you very much again